is my pleasure to introduce Sharon Langfelt. She describes herself as a cradle Methodist who strayed for a while before finally giving in to God's none too gentle nudge. Sharon graduated from ILF in June and is currently serving the Rollins Cooperative Parish in Rollins, Wyoming. 30 years as a manager in the computer business was great training for working with Methodists and Presbyterians as they joined together in a combined congregation. Please welcome Sharon. So in, in, the, bulletin, in, the, in the program thing, they changed the title, and I'm not sure why. This is the real title. Um, and we'll talk about that, about why it is. What was in the tea that day? And also, I didn't recognize that they had re redefined TED. But because I looked at this and I thought, I'm not sure where I, spit, I fit in there, so I'll have to go for entertainment. <laughs> so this, was the, this is the topic of my conversation. I'm just trying to, uh-oh. Okay, first of all, who can identify this red square on this map? <laughs> So this is Wyoming, and what do we know about Wyoming? Wonderful. It's this big square state. Up in this corner, we have geysers. In this part right here, there's a lot of bears. And down in, the, in this area, generally, are some really cool looking mountains called the Teton. So that leaves the rest of this. <laughs> what do you know about this part of Wyoming? Yes! Okay, there's oil and there's wind. So, and there's church. So, I'm from Rollins, and uh, Rollins is a town of about 10,000 people. Uh, we have, I have no idea how many churches, but a lot. <coughs> um, the only other woman um, clergy in town has contacted me, but that's it. We're working on that. Um, so among those churches originally were these two churches called the First United Methodist Church of Rollins and France Memorial Presbyterian Church. And then these two, because these people know each other, right? It's a, 10, 000, a town of 10,000. They know each other. They started talking about, you know, let's do some stuff together, right? So they thought they wanted to have a high tea. So they did. They had, this is not an actual picture of that. But they did white gloves and hats, and, they, and it was so wonderfully successful that they started talking about, what else can we do? You know, can we cooperate in other ways? So I, the name of the, of, the, of the church I serve is the Cooperative Parish. <clears throat> if you look at those words individually, cooperative means we're going to, come together mutually for some ultimate solution, right? For some reason, we're coming together. And a parish, which I kind of like this, is a religious community attending one church. So in um, January of, of uh, 2014, this tea happens. Both congregations recognize that they are in the midst of, of a transition. Their, their pastors are leaving for good and bad reasons. <clears throat> so they started looking and saying, what else can we do? Deb Olenek and um, the Wyoming Presbyter, who I think is equivalent of um, our DS, maybe, uh, of the Methodist DS. Not, um, I have to remember I'm not Methodist anymore. <clears throat> they started talking about, what if we came together? Neither of these churches can afford a full-time pastor by themselves. They want a full-time pastor. So what can we do? So the next step was to bring together representatives from each of those churches to talk about this. What would this look like? What would we do if we were to collaborate? So they, through all these conversations, in June of 2014, they became, began, began worshiping as one congregation. They came together. Um, in August 2014, they thought, we probably should formalize this somehow. So they, they said, okay, let's, let's try it, and we'll time limit it in case it's really a flop. So if this isn't working, we'll give ourselves until the end of 2016 to say, not working, we'll try something else. 
<coughs> Here's the basic mechanics of it. We change, <coughs> there are two, two churches, obviously, the Methodist Church and the pre buildings, not churches, and two church buildings. And um, every four months, we go back and forth. So January, February, March, April, which includes Easter. Easter. One, church has, one church building gets to host. Then on September, October, November, December, we will be at the other church, which would be. So each gets to have a high holiday each year. And it works out really great. We hold all meetings, worship, and all meetings are held at the building where we are worshiping. It gets tricky, though, because the, the uh, Methodist building also hosts a preschool. So, and that's where my office is. So there are some exceptions. So that's what I was just saying. September, October, November, December, we get to have Christmas. January, February, March, April, we get to have that. So what I find and what I want to share here today <coughs> is that this group of people came together and they said, we want to be intentional about what we're doing. We want to listen to God's word and take steps when we feel it's the right thing. And if we come up against opposition, if it's, if it's a struggle, then we aren't listening. So maybe it's not time to take that step. So that's what this little puppy is supposed to be. So we have, there's a, a term <laughs> that's <coughs> been coined. It's, at uh, RCP, and that is we change at the speed of life. So when life dictates what we do, we move. Upside of this, there's incredible vibrancy in this community. The, we, um, we worship about 60, 65 most weeks. We've grown a little bit. We've picked up a few Episcopal people. Um, we're we're starting to see some younger people coming. Uh, I um, did the 9-11 service that they do every year. Met all the firefighters, the EMTs, the police officers, etc. And they, we're starting to see some of them come. And a lot of the younger teachers are coming. So it's kind of a cool thing. Um, we also, because we have combined, have a choir of about 15 people. Uh, um, and that provides, it's, it's a special <laughs> thing for me in a small church to have a choir that sings every Sunday um, something. So, and the other thing where I'm, I've really work, worked on is um, I, I write a newsletter. We have an e-news every week. Being a, We do have older people in our congregation, so there are some people who want the e-news via U.S. mail. So I tried just sending it to the post office, but it didn't work. But, um, so we're going to have to start mailing out some. There are things I'm learning like, oh, hmm, how many of you are like that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, anyway, um, and so, but one of the things I do in the e-news is every week I write a column on similarities and differences between Presbyterians and Methodists. Can anybody name one? Reformed Presbyterians. Right, there you go. <laughs> right? Debts and trespasses, that's it. <laughs> when I went to meet, meet with the congregation, that was one of the questions. They said, you know, you know, what do you think about this? And I said, debts or trespasses. And, it, you know, everybody just kind of laughed. But I'm like, I don't, you know, really, we, you know, we're very Jesus-centered. And that's really what it's about. So that's what we do. So we are learning about each other's traditions, though, because I'm learning this kind of stuff. The stuff that matters to some people it will sometimes surprise me. And I will be going, oh, OK, I didn't, reckon, I didn't realize that was an important piece for you. So we'll change. Um, you know, the, but I always weigh in those, when you hear this, this is how we've always done it. My little, the hackles on the back of my neck go up, and I'm like, I don't give a shit. <laughs> and that's not really true. I do care. But the reality is, what are the things that are important to us? So this is a lot of the upside things. One of the biggest upside for me is, is obviously the vibrancy. 
the people are excited. We had a situation recently where uh, the Mennonites of town came and wanted to rent one of our buildings. We are building rich, which we all recognize what that means, right? We have aging structures that need maintenance. And the, so we had this opportunity to rent out one of our buildings. And, you know, so we sat together and, and the, the group that represents the parish council, which is what we call the ad council, um, came together and we talked about it. And basically what happened is somebody said, my grandparents were married in that church. You know, my, that my, my children were baptized in that church. And so I could feel it. I could feel this happening, right? But then one woman spoke up and said, I'd rather have a full-time pastor than a building. Mm. So that's the commitment level of these people. It's an amazing thing. But then, of course, we have, <laughs> we have to talk about, <coughs> I think I missed a slide. Oh, we have to talk about money. So there are challenges, right? As I said, there are two buildings. Um, that's one of the things. We are melding, and we are, we are going slowly. And we sometimes will take a couple steps and then go, mm, nope, and then we'll step back. So it's, again, in time, they will come together. A big thing that happened this summer, they merged the money. That's what I said before my time, but... Um, or BS, as I say, um, the, uh, they said, this is silly. We're paying bills from this account, this account, and, 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 and you know. Who do we, what, where, how do we pay this pastor that we're getting? And so they said, forget it. And it was not an easy thing to bring this together. Each group pulled, put, kept back um, a building reserve for their, per, their particular building and put everything else in one account. So does anyone else think this is as big as I do? <laughs> that to me is commitment, right? We walk with our money. We talk with our money. So um, as I said, we are melding, but slowly. Um, we, have, we, have moved from, we have moved from the prescribed structure of you know, various committees that are required. And we've created teams. And we've, we've merged some of those teams because of uh, expedience, really, truly, having enough people to do the work and committed people. So we, our structure looks a little different. Um, we have teams and team leads. We have parish council rather than ad council. Um, <laughs> we still have to, I'll get to that, I guess. Um, so as I mentioned, we have an abundance of riches. And here's the downside. We have lots of management. This all works because it comes, we're all happy, you know, we're all fat and happy working away. And then I get the message that your church conference is a week from Thursday. And everybody goes, oh, this is the Methodist church conference. I'm like, no, it's not. <coughs> and I say, I am committed to this. I said, we are not doing that. This is a church conference, and I expect all of you to be here. I'm not pretending that we have other, the leads that are in the jobs that they're in are the leads that who they are. We're not pretending they're anything but that. We are, I'm not even going to identify who is an M and who is a P. So, um, yeah, I get lots of management. But, and again, I've only been there since um, July 1st. Well, the 26th, actually, when I was notified of a death in one of our um, families. Um, I've, I've spoken to most of this, right? We have, the denominations are very, very similar. When I, the more research I do about the Presbyterian, first of all, our book of discipline is probably like this, and theirs is this. There are, uh, one, of the, one of the reasons I think this works so well is the similarity of the denominations. Secondly, these people have, most of these people have known each other a really long time. They're friends, they play cards together. 
there's a, a movie club. There, most of them go to that, which, of course, we can't have a committee meeting on that night. I mean, a team meeting on that night. Um, and another thing that is probably not remarkable for Rollins Cooperative Parish, but I'd like to call it out. We have really excellent leaders. And not just the named leaders, but the de facto leaders, the ones who, who lead by sitting back going, you know those? And they are very forward thinking. And we have the ones who are willing. I, was, I started to talk about the rental of the building earlier. The, um, so we get this inquiry, right? Well, can we rent one of your buildings? And we have this whole discussion. And one of the de facto leaders, as this is all this is going on, he stood up and he said, their emergency is not our problem. And it was very wise at that moment to say, just because they are feeling this pressure because they don't have enough room, not our problem. You know, so let's just look at what our situation is and deal with that. And the other thing is, I think, is patience, which is not my strength, truly. That's not. And so I'm learning every day from these people what it's like to say, hmm, not ready for that yet. Or, yeah, we could probably push that a little harder. And maybe we are ready, like the money. We are ready to take that step. I think it's when the pain gets, exceeds the, the benefit or the thing. So, so questions, comments about, um, yes? How do you do apportionment? The question is, how do we pay apportionments? We have been tracking the Methodist um, offering, but only the ones that um, pay, that have um, um, committed to pay monthly or whatever have, you know. So we're paying on that. And the Presbyterians have also paid their, whatever their equivalent of apportionments is. Other questions? Um, the question is, um, what happens in the summer? Basically, every four months we change. So January, February, March, April, we're at one um, build, building. Um, May, June, July, August, we're at another building. This summer, it happened to be the Methodist Church building, which does not have air conditioning. This will be the next thing that gets us to change. Um, and then September, October, November, December, we change. We're at, we're at the... Um, Presbyterian building. So, and we just then we'll then we'll go back to um, the United Methodist building in January. And then, well, that's yeah. Other questions? Yes. How are you keeping your greater? Um, I think that's a very good question. The question is, how are we? What's our? You know, what I I spoke about brand names earlier. How, what? How are we getting our name out there and letting people know of this? We've run. Um, I think now three stories in the newspaper about what this is. What does this look like? Why are we doing it? That kind of thing. I've had um, the Episcopals reach out to say, hmm, maybe we need to look, we need to look at this with you guys. Um, I have done, like I said, we had a, my very uh, second day there, actually, I got a phone call. There had been a, one of the young people in the community had been killed in a car accident. I had met these people that morning, that's all. So I did this, commu this funeral, he was, he'd grown up there, very popular young man, and there, the, we, our church was packed to the rafters. <laughs> you couldn't have, you know, you couldn't forklift another person in there, really. Um, now, there's not many places in town I go that people don't recognize me. So that was, it's, it's a sad reason, but it's a good reason. As I said, I also, um, have, I helped out on the, they do a 9-11 um, honorary ceremony every year. I helped with that. And for me, it's my feet being out there and, and the leaders committing to being sure that the paper changes the, where, the location of the services in a very timely manner, being sure that they say cooperative parish not France Memorial or Rollins First United. Lots of those kinds of things. Um, I think there's more we can do. 
I've, I've been there since July 1st. The, the person before me was Tom Thompson, who did a, an incredibly good job of laying the, the, the um, groundwork for this. I just can't speak highly enough about him. Um, so for me, that was a good thing. The, um, <coughs> let me, I lost my train of thought. Let's see. The, uh, the, the things that are going to get us are um, the, right now, I mean, there's, there's things we struggle with. I won't be, I, you know, I, would, I'll, I won't be disingenuous. The things we struggle with are, um, well, we used to do this, you know, those kind of, the, the, the services run long. And, you know, we Methodists, you know, an hour in, we're like, done, got to go. But, and so that's one of those things. The comment I hear the most is, we need to shorten the service. And I'm, always, I'm like perfectly open to that. Help me understand what you would like to not have in there. You know, there are some things in the Presbyterian service that we, in previous churches I've been in, we haven't done. And it's fine, but it does make it longer. So um, we also alternate hymnals, whichever church we're in. Oh, and another important thing, we, all, we have two organists that we pay all the time. The organist that's at the Methodist church gets paid even when she's not playing. And that's not a huge amount of money. And it keeps them coming. <laughs> and it keeps them involved. So, um, you know, we have one custodian for both buildings. I'm trying to think what else. It's something that's, and one, one secretary, one admin person for both buildings. But it's just, the, for me, this is the future. Um, when, as we look at denominations, we may be looking at this, especially in smaller communities where, you know, your choice is to go with maybe a half-time pastor um, or, you know, put up with the Presbyterians. That was a joke. <laughs> Um, the question is, will at some point we need to cut de denominational ties? Uh, that's going to be an interesting thing. Um, and I do think, um, actually what I really think is that the denominations will change. Because right now for me, um, I have too many bosses. And I have, um, and, and not, not in a boss sense, but in a paperwork and meeting sense, right? So since I started um, there, I, they made me go, even though I have an MDiv, they made me go to pastor camp to get my life, local, license local pastor thing. So I was gone 10 days. Um, the recent, I, you know, this. <laughs> Last week I had my, my um, board meeting, so I was gone two days. There are just a lot of those kinds of things. That's just the Methodist side. Right, so the end of the month, I go to the Presbyterian meeting in in Cheyenne. So, you know, that's, I think, and and the reporting structures. You know, the Presbyterians have a lot of things that they they have a very strict format for their minutes of the meetings, and those things have to be submitted in in a time and matter. I'm sure they go into someone's drawer, never to be seen again. Um, you're our newest Harvard parish, but you're not our only. True. Parish. Yeah, you know, I think again, it's it's a time thing for me, right? But I think I do, um, there's a there's a cooperative parish in Thermopolis, Wyoming, so I'm I'm hoping to um, connect there. I think there are probably others that I'm not even aware of, truly. I believe Brentwood Parish. You know, I think that um, I don't. I think this is the future for us. I think um, while I'm a, a Methodist to the bone, truly, what's going to happen here is. You know, denominationally, we're going to have to make some changes and recognize that this is the way it goes.